Hello everyone, it's your host Dr. Lin again at Sunrise Urology here in Gilbert, Arizona. If you are wondering how do we get these awesome pictures of the human body and who is responsible for that, I have your answer right here. Let me introduce you to Deborah Hewitt. She's a radiology technologist, right? Yes. I'm not a, okay, yes. not a technician, but a technologist. Right. <laughs> And uh, we have uh, crossed paths many, many times in the uh, operating room uh, where you come in and take x-rays for, uh, yes. for my cases. Yes. Um, so let's, uh, let's start with uh, what is a radiology uh, technologist and uh, we'll go from there. Before I start, I want to invite everyone who is watching to ask any questions in the comments and we will try to answer them, answer them either live or on the replay, we will try to answer them afterwards. All right, so let's figure out what is a radiology technologist and go from there. All right, well, what we do basically is we try to take the highest quality images we can provide. Well, at the same time, um, our, our job entitles, or entails a lot of patient care, actually. So it's both technical and you have to have empathy. So we're trying to get those pictures. Um, patients are often not in good condition when they come to us. They might be in pain. They might be worried. Um, so you have to kind of take care of the patient, but also we have to get phenomenal images. So you're at the bed. So part of what you do in, in your role is that you are in the, in the hospital setting. Yes. And then somebody orders an x-ray, and then you have to go to either the OR or the bedside to get those images. Correct. So we go to the ER, we go to um, the inpatient rooms, we bring inpatients down to us, we also do outpatients, and we go to surgery. So we cover everything. Everything. Everything, yeah. And we also do fluoroscopy, which are the live um, x-ray exams, like upper GIs, VCUGs, lumbar punctures. And stuff that we do in the operating room because... Sometimes we're using x-ray during urologic procedures, and Correct. then you are there to assist us to position the x-ray machine to make sure we get the optimal images so that we can continue on with our operation. Right. So we're kind of moving between the kidney and the bladders. That's right. Yeah. And um, uh, so tell, tell us a little bit about yourself. I know you, this was not your first job. You, no. You kind of took a circuitous, <laughs> no, circuitous I, route. I took the long road. Um, first, I was a flight attendant for 12 years. Which airline? Uh, American Transair, best airline ever. Um, Which is a, no longer in existence? <laughs> no longer in business. It was an international charter airline. Uh, U.S. military was our biggest customer, so we went all over the world. So I've been to, right now, 37 countries and wow. six continents. Wow. Most of that I was paid to do, which was fantastic. Um, my usual route was Hawaii. So I got to spend every weekend in Maui for over eight years. <laughs> what a and life. I, I, it, was, it was a great life until it wasn't anymore. Sure. So I've, all good things come to an end. And um, after 9-11, the airline went bankrupt. We were still flying around in bankruptcy, but they kept reducing our pay. And to me, the writing was on the wall. This airline was not going to make it, and I had to think of what else could I do? What is a safe career? Uh, what can't be outsourced? And where could I go that I probably would never be laid off? And so I thought, healthcare, obvious choice. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, Went into x-ray school 2005, never looked back. So healthcare because you know it's secure. Job it's secure. Sec much more um, secure. With the aging population in the U.S., I think it's a pretty safe bet that so, we're always going to need x-ray techs. Yeah. We're always going to need uh, pretty much everything. Definitely. And Believe it or not, yeah. that's part of the reason I chose urology because as I was going through mm -hmm. residency medical school, I thought, you know what, by the time mm -hmm. I, I get done with training, there will be a huge population of the elderly and in, in urology, we deal with a lot of older men and women. So everything yeah. is uh, definitely coming to fruition for sure. All right. I'm sure a lot of people who are watching are wondering, well, how much does a, a radiology uh, technologist make? And I actually looked into a little bit of this uh, online from salary.com. Mm -hmm. Median, sal median, which is the middle of the road, uh, salary is about 53000 and not including the uh, benefits. And if you include the typical benefits, that's salary, bonuses, social security, um, 
retirement uh, plans, disability insurance, health care, pension, time off. Biggest pie, obviously, is the base salary. And then the uh, health care is a good chunk of, of the benefits for radiolog radiologic technologists. And uh, this is also from salary.com. Total compensation, including benefits and salary, is about 76000 uh, as far as median goes. And obviously, that's going to vary depending on where you work, who's your oh, employer. Oh, definitely, yeah. Um, hospitals tend to pay more. Uh, we also work at urgent cares, imaging centers, pain clinics, uh, freestanding surgical centers. Um, hospitals tend to pay the most. And you're not going to expect that much coming out. Um, a new grad, probably uh, 40 to 45. 44, 40 to 45,000 for someone who's just coming out of training? Just coming out of, just coming out of school. Got yeah. It. And then depending on what you specialize in, you can add to your salary. It can just keep growing. So you don't necessarily just work in a hospital. You can go to the surgery center. You can go to mm -hmm. uh, a freestanding imaging center and, yes. then, and then go from there. There's plenty of jobs for us. Even yeah. now? Even now. Okay. Even now, all of my new grads are getting jobs almost right away. Okay. So you said all of your new grads. Let's, let's go back to what else you do. Okay. Not only do you work <laughs> as a radio, radiologic technologist, um, you also teach. Yes. Um, I've been teaching for nine years in the, in the hospital setting. So we take, um, there's three schools locally. We take two students from each one of those schools and we train them. We do the hands-on training um, there in the hospital. Um, and it, those students have to do 1,800 clinical hours, which means they have to work for us for free for quite a long time. I have some students for about 18 months. So these people are really, really well trained. It's not just, okay, you're out of no, they're, school. No, they're very and then... well trained. It takes that long to train. And obviously, we don't throw them in surgery right away. We start with the basics, and then we work our way up to the, the harder things, surgery being the last thing that we teach them. Because surgeons are, are the most empathetic and understanding people in the operating <laughs> well, room. Well, yes. And <laughs> we don't want them to get yelled. We don't, I don't want my students to get yelled at, and I don't want to make the surgeons angry. So sure. we wait till they're you know, more prepared before they go up there. And I repeat, we are the most empathetic and understanding people in the OR. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Actually, we have, we have great surgeons right. at our hospital. All right, so there, there are, there are the, the radiology, uh, radiologic technologists who work in the OR, obviously. I'm very familiar with those people like mm -hmm. you. And um, there are also technologists who work in different form, different modalities, not right. just plain yes. film. Yes, we have several modalities um, you know, at our hospital, so CT. Um, which is x-ray based, MRI, nuclear medicine, ultrasound. We have a women's center with mammography and DEXA. Um, let's see, we have interventional radiology and oh, we yeah. also have cath lab in our hospital. So I basically the only service we don't have is um, radiation therapy and PET. So oh, you okay. have to go to a more specialized place for that. Okay. But we have everything else. <laughs> wow, that's, that's, a, that's a lot. So how does one become a a radiation radiologic technologist. I can't get I can't get that straight. Radiologic I know. technologist. You can, just, you can say RT. 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 X-ray tech. RT. Um, how does one become? Yeah. Um, so what kind you, of training is needed? You, first, you have to apply to one of the local schools. Um, two of them have extensive inter interview process, so you have to test in and interview. What kind of testing is needed? Um, I had to do a modified IQ test and a math test. So only smart people get to go. Um. Well, the smartest of whoever applies. So no they, they generally get a couple hundred applicants, and these schools weed it out to about 20, 30 people per class. So no lackeys. No. <laughs> and one of my schools actually has a, a four- to five-year waiting list. So it is really... So why does that, uh, school, why does that school have such a, a huge uh, waiting list? To be honest, I don't know. Um, I don't know. That's just the way they do it. Um, is it a private school or is it a public? No, that's one of my community colleges. So um, I went to a private school. I got in uh, about six months after I applied. And, you know, I didn't have time to waste. I was 35 when I applied. So I'm, I'm like, no, I'm not going to wait five years. So you got but, in and boom, there you, boom, go, there you go. Yeah, but it costs a lot more. <laughs> but it's well worth it, though. It was I mean, worth it. Looking I'm, at the salaries. I'm out there working five years sooner. So worth it to me. Yeah, four or five yeah. year waiting list, that's... That's a lot, and but, especially you know, when there's apparently a shortage of radiology uh, techs. There's a shortage. Um, some of the students take that opportunity to get other degrees, 
Um, they may go um, get a medical assistant um, degree or you know, possibly a CNA. So they're getting possibly other degree there or they're just waiting. Okay. And, and sometimes that waiting list clears and they go sooner than the four or five years. That's so, still, uh, that's, <laughs> you're, you're sitting around trying to get in and not knowing when you're going to get in, right. right? Right. But I've heard some of the nursing schools have waiting lists as well. So and yeah, I, I guess a, it's not uncommon. Yeah. And there's a huge shortage. Yeah, that's huge, inc- huge shortage. That's incredible. Yeah. Okay, so they they can get it. They can get in through the um, schools. You get into the school, and, and then what then, kind of certification do you get after you um, finish your two year training? Right, you want to go to a school that's accredited. Um, we get an associate's degree. You can go on for a bachelor's. That's not necessary. Um, same with nursing. You don't need a bachelor's. You can just start with the associates and get the bachelor's later. Um, but yeah, we do a lot of classroom time, you know, anatomy, physiology. We have to learn our techniques, pathology, um, radio, uh, biology, because you have to know what you're doing with the, <laughs> what you're doing to the cells in the body. Yeah. When Ho- you're irradiating Ho- somebody. Hopefully not like the microwave where you're cooking. cooking no, too long. hopefully not like that at all. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, not we don't use that much. It's so. it's super super safe. I mean, even when I. When I run mm-hmm. the floral unit myself, not only do I do I what, what we call collimate, which means I am mm-hmm. limiting the amount of uh, radiation that's exposed to the uh, body, I also use low dose and I use the pulse setting to really, really minimize the amount of radiation going right. to the patient's uh, tissue. So that is very, very important. And for the technologist to understand that is right. obvious. And you're, right, you're really thinking about it because that, you know not everybody gives it that much thought. Yes. But uh, you're being smart about it. <laughs> so associates, and then you don't necessarily need bachelors. A you bachelors don't need be a, a bachelors, year. right, um, unless you want to go into management, say. Uh, and if you want to teach it at the schools, then you do need a bachelors. Okay, so what about um, not just plain films, what about CT scans and MRIs? Do, they, do those technologists need additional training? Um, we can sometimes cross train into those modalities. Um, there are classes you can take at the um, at the community colleges. You can learn because you have to learn cross sectional anatomy. Yes. And cross sectional pathology, which is much different. Um, MRI is very diff- difficult because you have to learn um, what it does. The physics of that is very difficult. Um, but you can certify in those as well. So we are board certified after you finish your school and you get your associates. You have to take the boards, and that is a 220 question exam. You must get a 75 percent or better to work in the field, and then you're federally certified. And then you go out and you get your state license, which usually, you know, if you have the federal, they they give you the state license. But you can also get the federal license in CT, MRI, Nuke Med. So there's every specialty has its own licensure. So you get your general. RT mm-hmm. certification, and then if you want to go into the more advanced imaging mm-hmm. modalities, you have to get additional training. Additional training, and there are some states... And certification. Certification, and there's some states where you can go directly into nuclear medicine or ultrasound, bypassing x-ray, but okay. that's, that's not the case in Arizona. Okay, so you so have to get start you, start with the RT, start and with then the RT, and then build on that. Move your, move your way up. Yes. Ultrasound is probably one of the most nuanced mm-hmm. i would say because it is not like a computer mm-hmm. or like a cat scan where yeah. you just put the patient through press the button and it kind of does a lot of the the imaging automatically ultrasound requires the person to actually manipulate the probe and then right and the, and the ultrasound can be very different depending on the operator yeah the quality yeah, of the it's... ultrasound image and uh, the relevance of the ultrasound imaging result is highly dependent on the operator, the person who's it actually is. doing ultrasound. It is. And that's an additional two years of school beyond the... Wow. Um, and, so and, you really, really yes. have to love <laughs> ultrasound. Yes, but if it's a great field and there's a very high need for that and it pays a lot more. So that's something that... You know, I tell my younger students, hey, if you consider ultrasound, consider ultrasound. Yeah. Well, here's here's the thing. I mean, I was speaking with somebody uh, recently and he did not go into ultrasound because mm-hmm. uh, ultrasound, you are 
very, very close. The probe is actually on the patient. So he's male. And to have a male ultrasonographer, sometimes you know you need a chaperone when Correct. you're doing a, and we a do that, female yeah. exam, and that makes it more difficult. Imagine if you're a, a imaging facility now, you have to have an extra person just to stand in a room. Right. So he didn't go into it because he's a male, and that, I think that's why a lot of the ultrasonographers yeah. are women. Well, we also need male X-ray tech or male ultrasound techs because there's some exams that are exclusively male right um, like the scrotal exam right yes scrotal ultrasound yes and so, penile, penile right. Doppler ultrasound and stuff like that yes i'm wondering if they have to have a male chaperone if it's a female in today's uh <laughs> environment i think it's more female for a female chaperone for a female patient but mm -hmm. i don't think in general a male is is present when a female ultrasonographer yeah. is uh, performing a male genital Examination. I, you know yeah. what? That's that's an interesting, that's yeah. an interesting thought. In in a, in an era of Me Too and all that stuff, right? We have to be extra right. sensitive uh, to those things. All right. So, um, what else can you do uh, with an RT uh, degree besides ultrasound, CT? You mentioned a little bit about management. So, how does one get into management? Um, usually we're promoted from within, so eventually... Within the organization? Within the organization. Okay. So uh, there's always a lead technologist, and that's usually somebody that's been there a while, very familiar with the processes, and has shown leadership ability. And from there, you can go up to supervisor, manager, director. Usually people are promoted from within. Um, Got it. Management. Management. Okay, what else can be done? Um... You know, I just, you know, just working in different um, sectors, like, you know, I could go work at a pain clinic if I wanted to. Different places different of employment. Different places, um, yeah. uh, surgical centers, you know, especially the ones that do ortho and spine, they need x-ray cool. techs. Yeah. Cool. So what kind of qualities would uh, would be desirable for a an RT, a RT candidate? RT candidate, um like I said, you have to be very quick on your feet. There's a lot of problem solving involved. What do you mean? Um, well, say um, I get somebody who's really busted up from a car accident, and I have to x-ray their upper arm, but they're, they're holding it like this. So now I have to figure out how am I going to get this shot. Um, I have to get a, a nice view of this, but they're holding it like this. So I equate it to playing pool, like billiards. You know, I know if I hit the white ball into this ball, it goes in the corner pocket. So now I have to look, well, if I come at it from this angle and I put the film here, am I going to get the picture I want? So you do have to have problem-solving skills. Um, as I said before, you have to be really good with people. Um, a lot of people think we're just button pushers or you just set a bunch of tech you know, technical right, factors right. and shoot the picture, but there's a really, um, there's a lot of patient care involved. You really have to take good care of your people um, when they're broken and they're in pain and sometimes they're crying. You know, you have to be able to work with them and you know, tell them, you know, I care about you and we've got to get these pictures, so work with me out here, you know, so... It's it's, uh, uh, <laughs> it's interesting. You're you know it's like uh, it's a photography of, of the human body. It's a photography of a different kind, mm -hmm. and you're looking instead of light, you're using radiation. We're using radiation, and then yes. the 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 film is what you shoot the radiation on to, and then the the structure that you want to image is in front, you know, between the right, the right. X ray so and the film. You, yeah, you always have to have the receiver, and then um, there's there are heavily um, like technical aspects. To the field so just like I know you're a photographer um, we can show different things depending on how we set our techniques so I can say you know if I want to see more bone I'll set it one way if I want to see more soft tissue I'll set it another way it's kind of like bringing out the foreground or the background De in photography. and depending on the, mm -hmm. the settings that you make the on settings. your machine mm -hmm. so we have two factors one is the amount of radiation that we use the second one is the speed or force of that radiation. And by tweaking those two things, I can show more bone, show more soft tissue. Interesting. Yeah. It's kind of like yeah. exposure, um, kind of like uh, shutter speed mm -hmm. and aperture yeah. in, in photography. Sort of. Yeah. Sort of. Not quite. Yeah. And you used to be able to set how many seconds you expose. With digital now, that's all 
the machines pretty much take care of everything for us. Yeah, so, so back we're, in a we're, day... we're a little bit lazier than yeah. they used to be. <laughs> back, back in a day, you have to actually take that piece of film and then... Mm -hmm. Run to the develop, dark, yeah, yeah go to the dark the film. room, develop it, and that's pretty much all gone by the wayside now. So you now have a digital plate. I have a digital plate. And then that you shoot the x-ray onto, and then right. you just put it in the reader and automatically brings Actually, it. Actually, um, there's no more reader. It's no more reader. No more reader. Uh, we're, we cut that out. Um, so it's just digital plate, boom, instant picture. Magic. It's, it's amazing. It's so magic. Cool. Yes. <laughs> magic. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, hello, James. Hello, Libby. Thank you for joining and watching. If you have any questions, mm -hmm. please feel free to ask in the comments below. We're talking with Deborah Hewitt. She's a radiologic technologist. Rad tech. Rad tech. <laughs> and she works at a hospital. She also teaches radiology uh, technology and she mm -hmm. trains other up and coming RTs and uh, get them ready for the real world. Prep them for the real world. Yeah. yeah. So what are the characteristics of a, of a successful, an RT that, that, you know, someone who's coming in, what do you think besides being smart, obviously, to mm -hmm. even get into the school and then being um, a people person, what, what mm -hmm. are some of the other t characteristics that would make them a successful RT? Um, I like to see when my students are really motivated, have an excellent work ethic, you have to be adaptable. Um, some people just like to get in their comfort zone and just, and just routine. Stay, stay in their lane. And there's so much we do. There's like a huge variety of exams that we do. So I like to see when a student is like really eager to get in on something that they haven't seen before and just jump in. And, you know, I was like that when I was a student. I was like, show me the crazy. I want to see the craziest things. I want in on all of that. All right. So yeah. what are some of the craziest things that you've seen? Well, um, I would say foreign bodies are probably, um, foreign and this bodies. is like dangerous territory. No, yes, no, 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 but, um, no holds bar when no it comes to okay. foreign, foreign bodies. Foreign bodies are the funniest things we see in x-ray. Sometimes not funny for the patient, but, um, it's the most interesting for us, uh, for me as a yes. urologist, for sure. Foreign yes. body in a urologic body part, yes. right? So that, okay. See, so what, yeah. so what do you see? What have you seen? Tell, um, well, tell us the gory <laughs> details. Children tend to stick things up their nose right. or in That's their right. ears, so um, sometimes children swallow things they shouldn't. Um, seen wedding rings in a child's stomach, um, beads, wow. toys, Legos, I've seen all that. Quarters, uh, dimes, coins, I think, are the number one thing children swallow, the children swallow. Okay. followed by batteries. Um, so Ooh, that could be really dangerous. If you have a, a talking book... It usually has like a little watch battery. The button battery. Button battery. And the children pull the cardboard apart and they eat the battery. So um, those are not a good thing to have in your <laughs> stomach. And so. what we have, my kids are a little bit older, but um, so they won't, they won't eat these things anymore. But we have these very, very, very tiny, tiny, strong magnets. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine the kids swallowing them and then having We've them. We've had that. I've had kids swallow those magnets. Yes. Mm-hmm. That and then with adults, it gets a little bit more adults. Yes, let's um, talk about a adults. A little hairier. Um, <laughs> uh, they'll put things in different places. Usually, where the sun don't shine, and uh, it's usually. So what's men. the what's the reason for people doing that? What, do you, do you ever get the I reason? Don't, I don't even want to guess. Um, the funny thing is, nobody ever admits that they have a foreign body when they come to X-ray. They're just walking funny, and oh, I have abdominal pain. And then we take the picture and we're like, oh, <laughs> oh, I see. But we never say, we never even of course. ask. We don't say, why did you do that? You know, and, so and it's, not, it's not my place. And the <laughs> RTs are so good. You guys see yes. the crazy <laughs> stuff on x-ray, on film, and you can't really talk about you can't. that with the patient while no, right after they, they have the imaging. Yeah. You can't, be, and especially because of HIPAA, you can't go home and say, yes. But pica is another thing we see um, adults who, you know, mental disorders, they eat things um, that they shouldn't. I had a patient who ate razor blades. And, Ooh, ouch. Uh, yeah, ouch. And uh, another one who ate a TV antenna. So wow. You know, things like that, you know, it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, just, Unimaginable. Just, just when you think you've seen it all. Something else will come along and... Uh, oh we, yeah. Um, yeah, we, as urologists, mm -hmm. we always like to sit 
sit around the table and compare some of the craziest things that we've seen stuck in um, urologic parts. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's that's a discussion from an, an, another time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, is there anything else you would like to uh, share with our audience? Anything else that you think we missed? I, I think we pretty much covered it. All right. So, yeah. so how do people get a hold of you to learn more about um, RT? I will probably put this link on my Facebook page. There and you if go. anyone has any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Wonderful. And especially about the three schools or how you get into the schools or anything more about the career. Sure. I'd love uh, to discuss it. Yeah, wonderful. Let me uh, turn to the comments here. Yeah. James asks, I love when a rat tech says, hey, I know you ordered, but I see this. Do you want? Love the critical thinking. Okay, so basically. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Can you address that? Yes. Yeah, so when we're working with ER patients, sometimes we'll catch something a little bit further up. You know, say they order a wrist x-ray on somebody that has a broken wrist, but I'm seeing something here, I might... You're, you're, so somebody orders an x-ray of the wrist, and then you, you, when you take the x-ray, you see, see something, something else. It's further up, and Got it's it. not included with the wrist, so then I will call the ER doctor, and I'll say, hey, I got this, do you want a forearm? Wink, wink. Awesome. And so, yeah, awesome. and so then they'll say, yeah, if you think we need a forearm, let's do a forearm. That's so you amazing. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's so. You, you have to be a people person. You have to be figuring out how to take the best, best x-rays when the, when you're at the patient's bedside. And then now you, you using your training and your and knowledge of what is normal, mm -hmm. when you see something abnormal that is not ordered on the initial x-ray order, right. you suggest, you call the radiology right team and say, hey, how about you ordered something over here so that you don't miss? Right. I mean, because ultimately it's all about the patient's yes. best interests. I already have them in my room. If there's something else that needs to be imaged, we should probably do it then. Yep. Instead yeah, of so. sending them back to the ER right. and then they have to come back. That's right. wonderful. Yeah. What else? Oh my gosh. Oh. Well, we are incredibly strong. You have to have an incredible amount of strength to do what we do. We're lifting heavy people. A lot of times in ICU, we have to actually lift the patient's upper body and put our film underneath it, sometimes all by ourselves. And we're wow. talking about people up to and including, you know, three, four hundred pound people. And I can actually do that. Wow. And we're also pushing and pulling heavy equipment around the hospital all day long, often while wearing 10 pounds. Oh, no, come on now. They're, they're, they're motorized now. They're, well, the okay. newer ones are I'll, motorized. I will grant you that. The, um, the portable machines are motorized, but the C-arms are not. So when I'm pushing a C-arm in and out of surgery, that is all me pushing that. That is that. true. So because it those, is, yeah. Yeah, the C-arms are heavy. They're very heavy. I remember, so, they, I remember during residency, mm -hmm. we used the similar, a similar type, I mean, the, the C-arms now are much more updated, mm -hmm. but they're the same. They drive the same way during residency and it's completely mechanical. There's no power or anything. Mm, you have, power. you have the, I mean, there's a lot of lateral movement and, yes. and forward and back movement. That's, yeah, you gotta oh, be pretty, yeah. you gotta be pretty strong. Upper Definitely legs and, yep. <laughs> right, legs and pushing yes. this stuff too. Yeah. Amazing. So lifting yeah. patients, shoveling around, putting the x-rays under them. Yes. And moving these heavy x-rays yes amazing all right um i see no additional questions all right if you guys have any questions on the replay please feel free to leave them in the comments mm -hmm. and uh, either myself or deborah will try to answer them for you and um we will uh, say adieu yes thank you thank you for having me this is fun all right <laughs> see you later